Hey guys, it's Dodge hey. and Fusky back for tutorial number 11. Uh, yeah. Today um, we did a little bit of an ask round on basic pages we usually do, and the thing that came up the most was people wanted to talk about sub base. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something we've touched on on other tutorials, but this one we're going to, I don't know how long a tutorial will be because there's not a massive amount to cover compared to other subjects, but we'll kind of give you some tips on how we do it, and uh, it's, it's not that complicated once you get your head around it, really. Yeah. So yeah. I guess before we kind of show you some examples, theory is the most important thing first. Uh, so really, um, the whole point of sub obviously is bass music is kind of very bass driven. So when you play it in a club, it needs to sound really fat uh, and have a solid low end. And the, the key really is balancing the right amount. And there's no technical way to explain what the right amount is. It's just relative, you know, to other tunes. So I mean, one thing to always remember when you're setting. When you're setting your sub bass levels and all that kind of stuff, it's like you know, know your speakers, know what it yeah. should sound like, reference other tunes. Yeah, listen to listen to good producers that are known for good mixes. I mean, anything by Knife Party and Pendulum is a good start. Yeah, Rob's for the end, like good, good example of bass music. Yeah, Knife Party is a very good example. Yeah. Um, um, in drum and bass, uh, again, Noise is a really good one. Yeah, and then like a trick I used to do um, was I uh, put on a tune and then like. You can like, physically touch the cones of the speakers at, a, at the listening level. You want to hear it, and like touch the cones of the speakers if you can, and feel like just feel how much bass is kind of coming out of them. And you kind of you can actually use some people do use that kind of touch method. As yeah, well. I don't use it so much anymore. No, but I'm just saying it is, it is a sort of they have smaller monitors because that's yeah. obviously an issue with smaller monitors. Is um, actually again Will from Cohen yeah. uh, said that you know he does the same thing. He's got quite small monitors, uh, and obviously you're not gonna be able to hear the full sub. Um, another good trick that I used to do in a smaller room is stick my head against the back wall of the room yeah. and you hear a lot more sub there where it kind of gathers, I don't know the exact scientific yeah, something to do with standing waves or something, but yeah. as long as you know what it should sound like in that room and you're not just listening to an exaggerated version so you again know what other tunes that are mixed down well sound like with your head against the wall before you start just Yeah, yeah, there are sweet spots in because some rooms aren't perfect and yeah, you have sweet spots. The chances are if you're watching this you're not going to be in a big commercial studio. <laughs> sure, a couple of you yeah. who watch this might be, but most of you probably won't be, so yeah, I mean tricks like Sticking your head against the back wall, room, back wall of your bedroom is always a good one that I used to do just to, to get a good feel yeah. for the sub that you might not be able to hear sat in your listening position. Yeah, yeah. Or well, save your pennies and invest in a subwoofer, but you know. Yeah, not but again, the subs in a small room can sound shit, yeah. so. But yeah, um, I mean, there are just a couple of little tips that you can do to improve your ability to hear, the hear and recognise what yeah. sub's going on. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's, I mean, let's well, think about what sub actually is. Uh, so obviously, like, it's generally. This isn't a scientific definition, but what I think of sub as being is anything really below about sort of 200 hertz when it starts skipping, 100 hertz and then around there. That's yeah, when you yeah. start to That's feel real sub. the bass. Yeah, I'm sure the technical definition is anything probably below 100, but well, yeah, I, yeah. I, I have no idea. Yeah. Don't <laughs> on that. That's not anything scientific. That's just yeah. the way that I think of it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what I would generally do, and then I'll, I'll speak for both of us on this, is like obviously when you put sub, when you're adding sub in and you're putting on its own channel, like as it's kind of a sine wave or a mixture of sine and a low pass saw, which we'll get onto in a minute, uh, you want to take the sub out of your, um, what we do anyway, is take the sub out of like, the main kind of which will noise be, of the synth. will be shown in a second. Yeah, so yeah. we'll kind of roll off below about 200 hertz, sort of yeah. gently curved down. So you can still, the, the sound still, sound, like the bass noise, like your raspy noise, is still sound the same, but you just can't feel any of the bass. Yeah, yeah. Without like taking the sub, effectively, so. is pretty much inaudible, it's, it's much more of a feeling and a sound system yeah. is it's what makes you know, speakers rattle basically. So. Exactly. And uh, yeah, I mean there's, there's technical reasons which are going up again. We, yeah. We're not really fans of getting into technicalities, we just explain what we do and what sounds good. Yeah. So um, yeah, roll it, roll it off below 200. We do that with all what the bass noise is, roll them off around then and then we'll add in subs. So I guess the best thing, Chris, do you want to open up a typical sub channel? Yeah, so well we what I was it? actually going to do is just on the note of having the the actual sounds of the bass is being rolled off. Is um, I've very neatly organised this project. So this is our rave review remix we're going to be using as an example. Now, here um, I'll just put them both together. This is just the, the on the drop. These are the bass lines. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to hear any of the sub through this. Maybe. Speed, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so I lapse them together. And this is just the highs again. This is, uh, this is with the sub turned off. This yeah. will probably sound the same actually yeah. with this microphone. But but, yeah. <laughs> so you've got all of the noise there, but there's none of the bass. Yeah. There's a sub, as it were. And then just the sub channel. I have no idea if the mic will pick this up. Yeah. But fingers crossed. I'm sure we can hear the clicks. If you can hear that, then yeah. that's, that's the sub. Okay. So that that's in its simplest form uh, how the two are divided. Now, 
To go into it, what we usually do, uh, the most commonly used thing for a sub is a sine wave. And all we do in Massive is literally select one or, two os uh, one or two oscillators. Now, right, we'll explain that. First things first, it's a sine wave and on the first oscillator and another one on the second oscillator. No, we're using a square on the second oscillator. Oh yeah, oh, yeah you can actually see, yeah, so I didn't read that properly. Now, you'll notice here that one is an octave below the other, meaning it's, yeah, it's, it's basically one's playing the real sub and one's playing at a slightly higher thing. Now, yeah, there's a couple of reasons out. for this. Um, do you care to explain? Yeah, okay, basically, so if you, you, you can get by with just, just a sine wave will be fine, but the thing is, like, depending on what key you're working on, the sweet spot of where it, where it really hits might be somewhere between putting it at one octave and putting it at the octave above, so you kind of, what's good to add tonality and to try and almost meet them halfway between the kind of noises and your actual sub is to get another oscillator, a bit quieter, an octave higher, and what we tend to do is, rather than just using a sign on the octave higher, we'll use either a square or a source, something like that, and we'll whack it, you can see through here, the, uh, a filter. the filter, low pass filter, and yeah. the cutoff is um, quite down, so you can't really hear any Yeah, I mean, we'll give you, um, a, I don't know, again, it's going to have to you be all here. Yeah, you played them a second ago, yeah. and so you, you, it, it's something you'll feel, it's something yeah. you'll have to experiment with, but it's, it's, yeah. you want, what you want to try and get out is tweak it, so rather than just getting a kind of a flat, sort of sub, you're getting a bit of warmth and yeah. a bit of what well, sounds almost like a muted bass guitar. Yeah, yeah, so and a square wave is going to, on, layered on top, filtered so it hasn't got any of the high end content, it's going to give you that effect, it's going to give it a slightly fatter, warmer sound um, as a sub. Yeah, exactly. Um, now, obviously, on these notes, um, we've had certain automation here of uh, modulation and pitch as well. On this is on, on the raspy noises, some of these yeah. notes they'll be pitch bending into all sorts of crazy now, modulation. Now obviously you're going to want your sub to be following the pitch of you know, something that goes without saying. Yeah. So, um, the, this massive here for instance that's playing the initial noise, on this one you can see in here it's exactly the same automation. Um, and that's for the sub. Yeah, and that's for the sub. So we've got, so what would have happened here is, would have loaded up a massive, copied the pitch bend settings, um, I, I could probably explain that in a more obvious up like, yeah. There's two ways of doing this, okay? There's the very straightforward way, which isn't always the best, but the very straightforward way is you just add a massive, set it up like we were before, and then draw in the same notes as what your main bass is doing. Now, sometimes you'll have pitch bends, all sorts of modulation going on, that's really hard to get the same. So, a really good way to do it is you can, I don't know, in other sequences, but in Cubase, you can literally, I'll show you here, say so this is your raspy bass channel here. You can right click on it and you click duplicate track. That will yeah. create an exact duplicate of that noise, exactly the same in every way. And then what we'll do is we'll just turn everything off that's raspy yeah. and turn the oscillators to like sine and square as we did with before. So it's basically creating the same the same kind of characteristics but with just a muted sound. Yeah. And then we'll EQ so. out any of the top end out and like boost the low end. So that basically gives you two copies of the sound which you can kind of individually manipulate. So with the low end subby one, we can obviously keep it in mono, we can boost the low end and basically use it as our sub. And then the top end one we can do things like put a, a, a spatial expander like a stereo expander plug in on it we can maybe distort it a bit give yeah. it a bit of a top end boost and so we've got much more control over how we're going to kind of process, process it yeah one and now the next thing i wanted to go into um only a little thing is in the intro of the rave review remix um there is halfway through the intro as a sub kicks in now there's no actual top end stuff to it it is purely a sub so i'll just play it in context <laughs> You can hear it hitting on the beat, dong, 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 dong. Now, for this noise, because it's solely a sub, I chose, uh, and due to the nature of the noise as well, I chose a, a sound that, um, let's see if we can get it playing. No, that's, okay, that's not going to work. <laughs> I think it's an octave too low on the controller. Yeah, but um, simply put, I'll solo it and you'll hear what I mean. There's more of a tonality to it than the other subs, like it's got a bit more yeah, of a kind a of like, distorted, like yeah. almost like tube distortion. And um, I mean, and that's also side chain. I'm um, side chain is a whole other topic that I'm sure we'll do a yeah. tutorial on. Yeah, we're, we're just focusing on. But yeah, yeah. So um, and that so, one there, and that particular sound. Oh, this is something. This is important as well. I forgot to mention on these drop noises, having the release, the attack and release settings, um, to very, very quick is very important because you don't want. 
if you have different subs from different, yeah. you know, we're talking about copying instruments. So you might have duplicated various channels yeah, yeah. and various different noises to so, make their own retrospective yeah, subs. So then you might have, say, three or four different sub channels. You don't want the tails of the sub that's previous overlapping on the new one yeah. because I've, subs are particularly like. Phase problems. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. So, so on these ones here, make sure your attack and release is super, super quick. Yeah. So on the envelope here, you can see it's like bang straight up, and then there's an immediate release. Yeah. And um, yeah. So I mean, that's on that one. On, on the intro, because it's just one noise, and it's in um, so monophonic it's like mode. A dubby sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's going to have a slightly longer release, but bearing in mind that it's only playing one voice at a time, so any time a note's pressed again, it's going to cancel shut off the yeah. note that they've gone There's no before. obvious reason that you'd always want to do this, and again, yeah. there's no obvious reason why you'd need multiple sub-channels, it's just, it's often the lazy way to get to get what you want really quickly, is to duplicate your bass noises, like we were saying, and turn them into subs. Stop, you don't yeah. need multiple sub-channels, it's just the way it often ends up yeah. happening. And there's some, some occasions where you want a higher release, so if you're trying to make a kind of dubby section, you want a kind of boom, boom, Mm -hmm. yeah, you might want the release, which we do use in our V sessions yeah, quite a bit. So you might want to kind of yeah. make it sound like someone's actually plucking a bass guitar and there's a bit of release into yeah. it. So here, sure. here on this one, yeah, you can see yeah. on the one I'm talking about, there's a much longer release on that. On the double attack So enough. it sounds less kind of like artificial. Yeah. And, and for that particular sound, there's actually a pitch envelope, a very quick one at that. But um, that's kind of going off the subject. I guess so. Up, I, I guess so. Yeah, that's yeah. just like different things we've done. Uh, but so generally speaking, we'll use sub in the context of reinforcing the actual base of, of kind of bass line noises. Because when we talk about bass noises, people don't really actually mean bass. They mean like kind of the noise, the kind yeah, of range sound, noise. The, sound the, the actual hear. technical sub bass, just because Jimmy comes from Simon. Simon yeah. But like as Chris said in but the intro the, there, we've we've used like with a the longer release, a bit of distortion on it, just to kind of make a subby sound. Yeah. And you don't always have to have an individual sub channel. Don't say, oh, that's the way, because like, load, this is one thing that like, always annoys me when I read things on forums and, you, well, God heaven forbid, you care comments and stuff like that. <laughs> it's like so many people talk about things in such a single-minded way that this is the way you do it. And there's, there's yeah. without, I, th I can hardly think of anything within music production that there's only one way to do it. You know, yeah, it's yeah. just like, there's ultimately time. it's about what sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and certainly with sub, that's no exception. But I mean, yeah, the key is don't ever have sub overlapping other sub really that's yeah. why we roll off those mid-range noise at 200 hertz so they have their own yeah. space to breathe oh, and that, okay we're very briefly um in terms of insert eq on that sub channel yeah um we're just we do something a bit here. weird here we, we kind of generally boost the low end now i don't know if there's much point doing that because you could just bring the channel up but yeah. it's just what we do when we're mixing yeah. and, and so and you can see here the our brilliant ducks and stuff you know on about ducks there's one here uh, precisely where the snare punches hitting, which we've talked about before. Yeah. Um, so it's completely flat. The, I mean, ultimately what's happening here is ru ru boosting that is equivalent to dropping the top end. So yeah. that's a simply cue that we've done for it. And we've taken it out at 200 hertz there to make more space so you can hear the snare smack so it doesn't get drowned out. Remember what I was saying in the previous tutorial about mixing about how when you've got someone talking in the room, you can hear what they're saying fine. If you had 20 people all talking at the same time, it would just sound like noise. It's because there's lots of things occupying the same space and you can't hear the elements anymore. Yeah. So simple mix tool, we've taken out 200 hertz out of the sub so you can yeah. hear the, the snare there and some of this kick as well, smack yeah. better. Um, yeah, and that's that's, that's a dead simple yeah. yeah. We haven't run out of time for once. That's, yeah. There's really not that much to it, to be honest yeah. with you. It's just a key of case of making it follow your bass noises. Sometimes, yeah. like keep it going when the noises stop. There doesn't have to be a staccato yeah. at them, but just experiment. And maybe one last mix tip for the subs is if you are working with um, multiple sub channels, as we often do, I am in the habit of grouping them to one group fader so you have yeah. they're all at the same volume but you can then yeah, maybe so whack it through a slight bit of limiting or a slight bit of compression just to keep it in rain. If, the, if you're then, having problems with that, yeah, yeah, and it just means that if you need to adjust the level of one sub, you don't have to adjust them e individually, yeah, each one. Yeah, so if you can adjust the overall general level of your yeah. subs. I mean, it'll be here, they'll so be sent to their own, yeah, here you go. Really, sub, really important sub, as well. Sub base there, that's the group there. And um, yeah, and there you go. Yeah, so main, remember the main key is really important when you're mixing down sub, walk around the room, get a gain of perspective. The sub's one of the easy things to get wrong. Um, and yeah, good luck. Hit us up um, if you've got any comments, criticisms, the usual stuff. Mm -hmm. um, big ups to our usual clothing sponsor people, uh, <laughs> which are the last few tutorials uh, who's been sending us stuff, uh, Defect and uh, Prang Out. So yeah. big ups. Big ups to Check the person that left us in my house. Thank Big you. ups to the person that left that in his house. I don't think that was a corporate sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> but they were very generous anyway. Uh, yeah, and subscribe, as usual. And we'll see you next month. Cool.